Well guys, it's that time of the year. All the tips and tutorials videos are coming out and none is more bigger than my MLB The Show 19 hitting tips video. I have a ton of people coming into my streams asking me, hey man, how can I get better at hitting? What tips do you have for batting in this game? A lot of returning players are still trying to get adjusted to the faster pitch speeds this year and maybe some of the hit types and things along those lines. So there's a lot to go over when it comes to hitting and I wanted to give you guys about six or seven tips that I think you can use to become a better hitter in MLB The Show 19. Now, just because I'm giving you guys my tips does not mean they are automatically going to work for everybody, but I have been a World Series player in Diamond Dynasty the past two years, uh, and I think I have a pretty decent idea of the way hitting works, or at least like how to set up your, your settings and give yourself the best possible chance when it comes to hitting in this game. Also, another thing, a lot of my viewpoint is going to be going towards online line hitting but most of these settings will work for offline gameplay as well just keep that in mind I'm more of an online guy so if these hitting tips don't really make sense to you in some ways then that's because it's just the different modes but anyway let's go ahead and get started into the hitting tips all right so right off the rip you want to find a camera that works for you that's my first tip is find your camera now as you guys can see right now I am on the camera labeled zoom zoom is one of the cameras I would recommend to use if you're trying to find the one that best works for you but in my opinion the best possible camera that you can use if you want to get better at hitting remember that's what this is all about this is about getting better at hitting is going to be strike zone or strike zone high some people like strike zone too but strike zone camera is going to be the most effective way for you to get better at hitting the reason this camera is so good is because you're zoomed in so close to to the plate you've got the closest possible view to the pitcher it's a lot easier to read the break on a pitcher's pitches it's a lot easier to recognize what's going to be a strike and what's going to be a ball you can really get a good feeling for the strike zone so you have better plate discipline and you're swinging at the right pitches when you're farther back from the pitcher on a, uh, a camera like maybe like MLB The Show 15 or, you know, Fish Eye if you want to go all the way that far back, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to see if a pitch is going to be breaking a certain way versus if it's going to catch the bottom of the zone and so on and so forth. It's just really easy to tell with the Strike Zone camera where a pitch is going to end up being located. Now, the thing with Strike Zone is you're going to have to sacrifice a little bit of presentation. Obviously, I really can't even see Mike Trout. I can see his body like like the front side of his body that's pretty much all I can see when I'm hitting so you know you're gonna have to sacrifice a little bit of presentation but I'm telling you if you're looking to get better at the game this is the absolute best camera to use in my opinion if you really 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 don't like strike zone you can try some other ones other ones I'd recommend like I said are zoom zoom is pretty good uh, strike zone 2 it's still similar to strike zone you can see a little bit more of the batter's body if that's something that you like uh, you can also try strike zone 3 strike zone 3 is actually very similar to zoom I don't really actually know how much different it is but you can still see pretty much all of Mike Trout um, or all of the batter in this case and uh, you're still pretty close but you know it's it's starting to get to the point where it's like the same as the other one so really that's my first tip find your camera if it's me I'm going with strike zone uh, I don't really care that much about sacrificing the presentation because uh, I just really want to be competitive in these online games so strike zone camera find your camera that is my first tip the next tip for you guys is going to be using zone hitting so there are three different hitting interfaces you've got directional which is this one where you basically just like point the uh, you know strike zone to where towards on the field you want to hit it uh, you've got pure analog which uses the joysticks but the best uh, hitting interface the one that gives you the most total control at the plate the most user control is going to be zone with zone you have these two yellow lines this is called the PCI the PCI is basically the plane of your swing sort of it's where you're looking so if you are sitting high and inside and you get a fastball high and inside you can go ahead and probably hit that ball really well if you're sitting on it uh, but you know you want to be able to adjust to and with the PCI you can really adjust to different things well once again you get the most user control of the strike zone and of the bat 
Also, it's really nice that you just have to press X to hit. Uh, you can use square for power swing. You can use circle for contact swing. Don't really ever recommend using circle. It's not really that useful, but square and or square and X are usually the best two to go with. But yeah, zone hitting is definitely the best way to go if you're looking to get better at the game and get better results because, you know, you're just going to have more overall control, more overall user uh, control of the strike zone and hitting so zone hitting is definitely the way to go for the interface by the way going off what I said on power swing and X swing uh, the way I did it in MLB the show 18 was I would usually use square to power swing until I got two strikes in account uh, and then I would change to X on when it got to two strikes, but I don't know if that's necessarily the move this year I haven't totally figured out if square or X is really the better uh, You know method to use so I'm still working on that uh, You guys should give that a try and online see which one you end up liking better All right The next tip I have for you guys is find your PCI find the PCI that works for you so you guys can see I'm at the plate and uh, My PCI is two basically like parentheses right here. So this is my PCI the two parentheses the thing that I'm moving around that is called my plate coverage indicator And there's actually different styles you can use so if you go here to your hitting controls and you change your PCI appearance You can go reticle buckshot probably wouldn't really recommend buckshot classic outline wedge dynamic reticle once again So you got those ones the two that I like the most are probably reticle and wedge This is a look at wedge as you can see it's got that yellow dot in the middle I know that yellow dot helps a lot of people kind of uh, you know pinpoint where the pitch is going so they're ready to get it That's a really really good swing from Mike Trout right there on a high fastball I think it was because I was doing wedge I was able to kind of really aim my PCI to where I wanted it to go This one is called classic. It's just a yellow circle. That's kind of low in opacity So it's not really uh, you know, you can still see through it and uh you know, it, it gives you a pretty big range of where exactly your swing is going. Personally, the two that I would use are reticle and wedge, but feel free to try out all the different PCIs and just see which one you really feel works for you. Okay, the next tip I have for you guys is also going with the PCI. It's going to be find your starting point. So a lot of people ask me, hey man, where do you start your PCI? I know a lot of people that start their PCI low and then they adjust to wherever the pitch is going in the strike zone. I know a lot of people who do the opposite. They start their PCI high and then they adjust it from there. For me, the way I find it the most comfortable is I always keep my PCI before the pitch on the left side of the plate because I feel like I can really easily adjust to any pitch that comes my way when it's there. I think it's the way my thumb is positioned on the controller. Here's Cole Calhoun. I'm still going to start my PCI on the left side of the plate. Once again, it's easier for me to adjust left to right than it is from right to left. Like I know a lot of people like to start their PCI inside with lefties, but for me, I still always just keep my PCI started in the same spot because I find it easy to adjust to either side. But uh, that might not work for you. You might like to start your PCI high you might like to start it high and inside you know it just all depends on where you feel the most comfortable for me I always just go left side of the plate whether it's a lefty or a righty it just is what I'm most comfortable with and what I've truly found the most success with in online play and uh, in pretty much any other mode really okay tip number five this is going to be more towards the online side of things because it's harder to really do this against the CPU um, my tip is going to be read and stuff Study your opponent's tendencies really understand what your opponent is liking to throw if they really like throwing or if they really like throwing that inside fastball then you can start sitting inside with your PCI you can start being ready for it uh, you know if they like to throw low and in you can kind of start your PCI here and then it's a quick little adjustment uh, you know just kind of keep a mental note as the game progresses because your opponent is gonna find pitches in the game unless they're getting absolutely destroyed with everything they're going to find at least one or two types of pitches in their arsenal that they are finding the most success with so you want to be able to try to take that away from them the only way you're gonna do it is if you're studying your opponent's tendencies and figuring out where they like to throw it if they really like throwing that low and away curveball you got to be ready for it you might want to start there and then adjust to anything else if this is the pitch that's working the best you know use use logic right here try to figure out what you want to do because their tendencies will be shown to you they they literally throw the ball to you so just kind of be able to adjust to your opponent's tendencies and uh you know figure it out okay the next tip is going to be have 
plate discipline. Do not be afraid to take pitches. I don't care if it's a strike. Do not be afraid to take strikes. Taking strikes in this game, there's no negative impact. Swinging and missing at a strike will have a little bit of a negative impact. Swinging and missing at a ball will have a much more negative impact. And, you know, it's just all about being comfortable in the plate and especially being comfortable in two strike counts. The reason I'm saying this is because if you hold R2, you can obviously see the five or however many pitches your pitcher has. There's two bars up there. You've got the energy bar and the confidence bar. The energy is just self-explanatory. Self That's his stamina. The confidence bar is a little bit different. Let's say Walker Bueller is on the mound and he has thrown three straight balls to Mike Trout. He's in a 3-0 count. There's a runner on first base. That's a very dangerous spot to be in. So his confidence is going to go down a bit. But let's say Walker Bueller was throwing strikes to all three of the hitters in the first inning, his confidence is going to go up a little bit. That confidence bar is really important because it's going to be able to affect how good a pitcher is able to locate, how much better their uh, analog is going to be, and things along those lines. And if they throw a strike and you take the strike, their confidence is probably going to go up just like the absolute minute amount. But if they throw a strike and you swing and miss, their confidence is going to go up even more. If they throw a ball and you swing and miss at the ball their confidence is going to go up even more but if they keep throwing balls and you keep taking those pitches their confidence is going to go down so you really want to have good plate discipline you want to get in more hitters counts and the only way to do that is really to be able to take pitches understand the parameters of the strike zone do not be afraid to take strikes if you don't like the pitch and be comfortable with hitting with two strikes because if you're comfortable hitting with two strikes you're going to be able to be a lot more patient you're going to be able to take a lot more pitches and you're ultimately going to put yourself in more opportunities to be successful i mean that's just baseball 101 but when it comes to the game there are certain mechanics in the game with the confidence meter as i talked about that do have an impact so just be patient, have some plate discipline, and you know, don't be afraid to take pitches. Okay, the last true tip I have for you guys is really just a basic one. It's pretty self-explanatory. Just practice, man. This custom practice mode is a very, very nice tool they added into the game last year. You can set the play however you want it if you want guys on first and third. Don't be afraid to up the difficulty as well. I was doing that on All-Star, but the pitch speeds on Legend are much faster. When you get to the higher divisions in ranked seasons, the pitch speed are going to be very fast so you want to be able to catch up to these because you know if you want to be a competitive player you're gonna have to be able to hit hitting is the most important part of the game so come into this custom practice mode go into challenge of the week if you want to and just be able to kind of you know work on what you might be bad at if you're not good at hitting low fastballs then you know hopefully the pitcher you're facing will start throwing you a lot of low fastballs and you'll be able to kind of catch up and figure it out and kind of figure out what you're doing wrong this custom practice is just a great way to really hone your skills so do not be afraid to take a little time maybe 20 minutes before you hop into a ranked seasons game you know just be like all right i'm gonna get some swings in just kind of practice a little bit and get warmed up and everything and uh, over time you're auto you're obviously gonna get better you're gonna get better no matter what you do how long you do it anything you do for a long period of time it's going to be better so just practice keep playing the game so those are my seven hitting tips but i do have one more um i didn't want to include this as a tip because you know it's not really a tip but one thing that's really helped me become a better hitter is uh control freaks if you don't know what control freaks are they're basically joystick extensions for your controller so as you guys can see i've got two control freaks on my controller right now i have a medium control freak on the left and a uh, low control freak on the right so you can just take them off like that boom it's off it's off the controller and I got the regular joystick and then I just clip it on and it's as easy as that so these things they basically give you a wider range of movement and uh, it's you get to be more precise with your PCI and things along those lines these have helped my game tremendously I was using them even before I was partnered with them yes I am partnered with them uh, so control freaks are an absolute great tool if you want to spend a little bit of extra money and if you go to controlfreak.com and you want to buy something use my code kooks for 10% off but I didn't want to include that as a tip because I'm not like selling out I just want to let you know that 
that is an external thing that has helped me. So yeah, guys, those are my hitting tips for MLB The Show 19. Let me know if there's anything that you do different that you find works for you. Leave it in the comments because some people will probably have some more questions. Some people will probably have, you know, more opinions. So talk about it down there. See if people want to try new things. So uh, yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching the video. Drop a thumbs up if you enjoyed. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed the video. If you learned something new, I'm bringing out more tutorials for this game uh, pretty much daily right now. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I will uh, see you in the next video. Peace.